next I would request Mr. Fazil Mahmood from Schneider to please his presentation on technology innovation. Uh, a very warm welcome and good morning everyone. I am Faisal Masood. I represent Schneider Electric and uh, today I'll be discussing about the aspect of sustainability at, uh, as it has been previously spoken um, by our honorable chief guest and they have laid down a very important aspect you know what is what is that what we are going to leave behind for our future upcoming generations are they going to be proud of what we have done to the world which is in the future or they will be cursing us okay you know our previous generations have spoiled the world for us as we can see sustainability is something which uh, is of a real prime concern for every individual it's not the responsibility of a corporation of a or a government body but it's a responsibility for every citizen of this country and of the world as you can see, you know, some of the data which is being uh, reflected on the slide that how with respect to power demand per capita uh, uh, carbon footprint emission, uh, carbon emission is, you know, shaping up. The slight, uh, you know, downfall which we have experienced uh, in COVID times, it clearly indicates, you know, if we uh, cut down on or, or if we increase our efficiency, it directly reflects to uh, reduction of carbon footprint. So, as you can see, India is a progressive economy. We, uh, uh, we have ambition to become $7 trillion uh, by 2030 and there have been many programs which uh, is, uh, you know, boosting that uh, uh, ambition of our country. Especially for power sector, you know, if we see there has been a lot of relaxations which has been provided for uh, foreign direct investments in, in the sector. And as we see, you know, the rate of urbanization is also uh, picking up. We will see, you know, uh, by 2030, almost 40% of the population uh, we expect to be living in urban areas. And how it is going to shape our power demand? Currently, as our uh, Honorable Minister previously was stating, that today we stand in terms of per capita power consumption one third uh, with respect to the global uh, average power uh, consumption by uh, per capita which is uh, approximately around 1395 kilowatt. But going forward, we will see there will be a significant rise in power demand and it is going to be expected to be doubled by uh, 2030. And to meet that demand, we have to have power generation sources, but what, what uh, you know, we are more focused on becoming 50% uh, renewable green power by 2030, which is a very uh, ambitious target that we have set forth and we believe that we will achieve, not only achieve, but we will overachieve with all the ambitious programs like PLIs and other incentives that government is aiming to be. But not only, you know, with respect to the generation part of the power sector, but also from the transmission and distribution sector that, uh, that there is a lot of work that needs to be done. So uh, what we can see, you know, the, the, the challenges that we foresee going forward or in the current state what we are experiencing is one one of the prominent challenges der integration you know the the power generation sources are increasing number of sources are increasing in multi folds so the grid should be flexible enough first of all it should be very very uh, you know important to understand which is the right place where the power injection which is the right place where power injection should take place so that grid capacity is very well taken care of and also, we will see more and more participants coming up, so grid should be flexible enough to accommodate that participants, power generation companies getting connected to the grid. And at the same time, when number of participants are increasing, the infrastructure is going to become more complex, so there should be some kind of an immunity which enables grid to be resilient, so that if any problem occurs, grid should be intelligent enough to identify the problem, its magnitude and if possible it can isolate the problem area and restart the grid automatically. And to make this happen there should be a adequate amount of digital grid management. You know even most of the progressive utilities they have been uh, doing very wonderful job in digitizing the grid but that's a long long way to go. Largely what we see you know more uh, whatever uh, automation that has been foresighted for uh, with respect to voltage levels is limited to 11 kV. But uh, uh, you know, uh, I would really appreciate what like um, uh, our previous speaker from Tata Power, Mr. Singh, was stating. You know, they are 
going beyond 11 kV, they are connecting low voltage network to the grid so that the entire grid panorama is visible at a common platform. So digital grid management is again, you know, very, very important aspect. Now when you digitize the thing, then risk of cyber attack also comes uh, into picture. And Indian power sector is not, you know, uh, unaware of this uh, cyber attacks. We have experienced cyber attacks and, uh, you know, now we are on the pathway of creating some policies, guidelines, which enables us to be more resilient towards cyber attack. New energy consumer is again, you know, uh, a, a challenge for us, largely challenge being imposed by rooftop solars or EVs and EVs which are there in the, uh, which is connected to the grid. Uh, I will take a very discrete substation, last mile substation for a discom. Let's say for, for a, at a uh, discrete 11 kV substation, if there are multiple EVs which are connected and at, at the evening time, all the EVs are start charging themselves, probably there will be an overload at the discrete substation level. So there has to be kind of a mechanism which is enabling you to monitor the real time demand and what response should be there for to, to cater that demand. Again, you know, when we are digitizing, then there is a lot of data. So data can be monetized for a lot of beneficial purposes. Uh, I will just give you a very interesting example. I am a, let's say there is a technology company which is, manufactu uh, which is uh, manufacturing a premium uh, refrigerator. So I can go to a utility and ask that, okay, which are the consumers which are having, uh, let's say, maximum demand of, uh, say, 5 kilowatt and above with the consent of the consumer, we share that information for their mar targeted marketing activity so that they optimize on their marketing cost, wherein whatever will be, we will be charging, a utility or discount may be charging for that data share. They may, uh, they may incentivize consumer because they have shared their data for that marketing campaign. So there are a lot of ways by which uh, we can monetize the data. Losses, yes, there has been, uh, it, there has been, uh, you know, losses are very, very prevalent and there has been many uh, initiatives that has already been taken care by transmission, distribution and generation companies to overcome uh, those losses. Now to become sustainable, what most of the corporations, sustainable corporations across the globe are doing, largely what we experience, it's a three-step approach that has been followed. First step is strategize. It is very, very important to understand what is your carbon footprint, what is your baseline of your carbon intensity of your infrastructure. So first of all, the measurement needs to be, needs to be uh, done and after that, we should create a road map to decarbonize the infrastructure or there should be a decarbonization road map with some tangible uh, initiatives for uh, to be taken care of. And once we develop a roadmap, it should be clearly communicated to all the stakeholders. For a DISCOM, it is their consumers, their employees, and uh, maybe transmission companies and generation companies. This is the roadmap that we are going to follow. And since, as I have previously stated, that sustainability is responsible, uh, responsibility for every, every citizen in the world. And that's how, you know, your sustainability, organizational sustainability roadmap needs to share with every stakeholder so that they, they contribute to it. Once you, when, once you are done with the communication, there should be a platform which enables, enables you to measure your real-time carbon footprint with respect to your infrastructure, which you are responsible for. So digitization of entire infrastructure, where that digitization should enable you to visualize your carbon footprint so that you are first of all monitoring your real-time carbon footprint, but also at the same time, it will enable you to find out which are the areas where we need, you need to work upon to bring down your carbon footprint and uh, uh, you should have a dashboard reports like you know we have BRSR mandate wherein we have to report our carbon footprint and sustainable initiatives similarly you know it will it will a digital platform will help you it will not help the corporation or the relevant government bodies but it will also help to share information with respect to your sustainable initiative with your consumers also so that they also feel more connected more involved in this entire value chain once you have a platform, you are able to visualize your carbon footprint and you, you, you know where to work upon, then you can go for a decarbonization journey. Wherein you, you, so there are multiple ways where you can go for a decarbonization journey. First of all, you go for green equipments, 
you you can go for creating an infrastructure which is more greener in nature like you know we are using sf6 uh, switch gear uh, in medium voltage and high voltage uh, uh, distribution network wherein we instead of sf6 we can go for sf6 free kind of a switch gear there are technologies which are more greener like whatever switch gears you are having uh, which is non SF, uh, non gis so you can go for a uh, switch gear which is more greener in nature which has lesser carbon footprint also you you have you should have an automation platform uh, which improves the efficiency of the overall system and at the same time it should enable you to have predictive maintenance on your infrastructure if you are able to visualize and predict the failure occurrence of a failure of any 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 asset in your infrastructure if you don't allow the failure to happen you are going to increase its life just taking a small example a transformer it is expected to let's say a life of uh, having a life of 15 years if by having a predictive maintenance i am not allowing transformer to uh, fail and i am increasing its life for another 10 or 15 years so for that additional 10 or 15 years you are no, first of all not going to buy a new transformer directly reducing the carbon footprint and also you are contributing to circularity because to construct a new uh, you are you utilizing your asset for a longer period of time so there are multiple methods so largely most of the corporations in the world they follow this infrastructure now when when it comes to the overall infrastructure of the energy ecosystem right from generation to transmission to distribution till the farthest of the consumer and also the off grid consumer there should be a platform it is the time where we should think of having a unified platform like you know there should be a network model which is on a unified platform and nothing better than uh, having a gis geo uh, geospatial information system wherein you are able to have a platform which gives you information of all your assets which are can, which are in the network right from generation transmission distribution till prosumers all of them on a common network so that whatever modeling you are doing whatever like if you are having an SCADA system if you are having an ADMS system the single source of truth should be your geospatial network model and as we are having more and more digitization the replication if da uh, data is also becoming very very relevant so to optimize on your IT infrastructure cost because let's say if you are having a Windows server maybe you know after 10 years the su support will uh, no longer exist the technology company will say okay now we are uh, you know it is end of life product now you have to go for a new product so if you make your data infrastructure more leaner you will also optimize on your IT infrastructure cost as well as you will if you are having a central data it will um, your data uh, database will become more lean, more faster to access and more uh, centralized so that the decision making is more faster. So going forward, you know, so what, what is exactly needed to become more sustainable? It is again, you know, we, we, uh, we should look forward to invest in digital. We should look forward to invest in creating infrastructure which is more greener and that's how, you know, we will have a, a sustainable infrastructure for the future. So this is... Uh, what we have committed this is our target that we had almost we are you know uh, we'll uh, we have achieved this target there as a technology company first of all we are very proud to say that we are one of the most sustainable corporation globally so so for any technology company to to uh, who who is working towards creating a sustainable world first of all they themselves have to become sustainable because of the whole value chain so that's how we are very proud to say that we are one of the most sustainable corporation in the world for the last 13 years and we not only contribute to become uh, to make sustainable uh, our customers but also our partners and we are also contributing to become sustainable in our operations so thank you that's all thank you everyone thank you mr masood